find it incredibly interesting how certain mainstream media outlets choose to cover stories. I also find it incredibly interesting how prevalent this this victim mentality is throughout the NBA. Multi-millionaires, young men making 30, 35, 40 million dollars a year, wanting us to feel sorry for them, wanting you to believe that they are victims. The NBA is once again making headlines in the mainstream media for all the wrong reasons. We have another superstar player, extremely talented, one of the best guards in the league, not being talked about for his talent, for his game. He's being discussed because of his supposed victim mentality. This story with Donovan Mitchell, it kind of relates to something else going on right now in the world of hip-hop. I don't know how many of you guys are familiar with Jermaine Dupri and his protege Bow Wow, used to be Lil Bow Wow. When Bow Wow was 12 years old, Jermaine Dupri took him under his wing. He taught him the music industry, taught him the business, turned him into a rap superstar. He wrote and produced almost all of his music. He made this kid a millionaire before he was a teenager. It was almost like he unofficially adopted him. Bow Wow grew up without a father. Jermaine Dupri was a father figure in his life and a relationship that has spanned over 20 years. But over the last couple of years, and even up until this week, Bow Wow has taken public shots at Jermaine Dupri. He is publicly disrespecting the guy who raised him. Kind of similar to what's going on right now with Donovan Mitchell in Salt Lake City. Now, I'm not going to say Salt Lake City raised Donovan Mitchell. That wouldn't be accurate, but they did welcome him with open arms back in 2017. For five years, from the ages of 21 to 26, fans of the Utah Jazz blindly supported Donovan Mitchell. Now, if you're a regular viewer of the NBA, you know the Utah Jazz have one of the most passionate fan bases in the league, in all of sports, really. Every home game sold out. Vivint Arena is arguably the toughest place to win on the road in the NBA. When Michael Jordan was playing the Jazz in the NBA Finals back in 97 and 98, he would not allow his young children to attend road games in Salt Lake City. Why? Because the arena was too loud, the fans were too volatile, in a good way. People in Salt Lake City love their basketball team. They support these players with everything they have. The only problem is, at least for Donovan Mitchell, Utah fans are the wrong color. In the first opportunity that he was given, Donovan Mitchell took the opportunity to shit all over the people of Salt Lake City. Last night, the Jazz were in Cleveland to play Donovan Mitchell and the Cavs. Now, the Cavs won the game in a blowout, but ain't nobody talking about that. This was the first time Donovan Mitchell was playing against his former team since being traded back in September. Now, prior to the game, he was interviewed by Mark Spears from ESPN, who is a writer for Anscape. Now, if I remember correctly, Anscape used to be called The Undefeated. ESPN started The Undefeated back in 2016 specifically to cover all the woke shitfucks in sports, mainly in the NBA where most of them reside. As a writer for The Undefeated, when you're interviewing an NBA player, your job is to get them to open up. Your job is to illustrate their millionaire victim status to the handful of people who choose to read this garbage. And to his credit, Mark Spears played his role to perfection. He hit Donovan Mitchell with a racial question that should have been easily dodged. How does it feel going from Salt Lake City, a place filled with evil white people, to now living in Cleveland, a city with plenty of marginalized victims? All Donovan Mitchell had to say was, Hey, I enjoyed my time in Utah. The fans there were great. They always supported me. But now I'm on to the next chapter in my career. The city of Cleveland has welcomed me with open arms. We are winning right now. I'm really enjoying it here in Cleveland. That's simple. That's all he had to say. But instead, Donovan Mitchell opened up about the rampant mythical racism that he experienced over five years living in Salt Lake City. There were just so many examples. He started off by mentioning Utah State Senator Stuart Adams opposing the teaching of critical race theory to children in elementary school. Now you got to remember, critical race theory, CRT, this was designed to be taught to graduate level law students. 
It would be like trying to teach first graders quantum physics. They're not going to understand, which is exactly why they want CRT taught at the elementary school level. It's not meant for children to understand. It's designed for them to be brainwashed. Donovan Mitchell, though, he was upset because the senator said that he needed to be educated on what the state of Utah was trying to legislate regarding CRT. Apparently, that's considered mythical racism. He continued by sharing the harrowing tale about the one time he was pulled over by the police in five years. He said that he was pulled over for an unknown reason. This was so scary. The cop was not nice to me. He asked for my ID. My ID? ID? I thought identification was no longer required. I didn't need it when I went to vote both times in the 2020 election. The cop was so rude, he ended up letting me go. Um, let me get this straight. You were pulled over. Perhaps the cop was having a bad day. He wasn't in a pleasant mood. He was in such a bad mood that he lets you go without writing you a ticket. And I'm supposed to believe that is a racial issue? I have been pulled over so many times I've lost count. Sometimes the cops are nice. Sometimes they're assholes. Look at me. I will never be mistaken for being black. I'm so white you need sunglasses to watch this video. I've had white cops treat me like shit. I've had black cops that weren't so nice to me. Also had both white and black cops treat me with respect. This ain't a racial issue. It's a people issue. But moving on, Donovan Mitchell claimed that he was constantly drained during his five years living in Salt Lake City. One of the reasons for his lack of energy I never saw us in the crowd. I was constantly surrounded by evil white people. Um, okay. First of all, black people make up about 3% of the overall population of Salt Lake City. In a city of 200,000 people, that comes out to about 6,000 people. And yes, I confirmed this math with our ultimate math nerd, Mita Kimes. So if every black person in Salt Lake City attended a jazz game, they would fill about a third of the arena. So it stands to reason there won't be many black people at jazz games. Again, this has nothing to do with race. It's just simple math. And number two, I've been to a lot of NBA games in New Orleans. New Orleans, a city with a black population between 55 and 60 percent. Inside the Smoothie King Center, vast majority of the fans, white people. Mark Spears then asked Donovan Mitchell if being in Cleveland with a predominantly black population reminded him of being back home in New York. Basically, if being around people that looked like him made him feel comfortable, made him feel more at home. I thought this was interesting. Donovan Mitchell is not from the Bronx. He's not from Harlem. He didn't grow up in Jamaica, Queens. Donovan Mitchell grew up in Westchester County with a black population of 13% and a white population of 50%. Seems to me he would feel more at home in Salt Lake City. His father was the director of player relations for the New York Mets. Donovan Mitchell spent his childhood in Major League Baseball locker rooms. When he was a young child, he wasn't looking up to Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant. Donovan Mitchell idolized Scott Casimir. The first poster he hung on his bedroom wall wasn't a poster of Biggie Smalls or Reggie Miller. When laying in his bed, Donovan Mitchell was staring at a poster of David Wright. His childhood was so tough growing up around all these white people and professional athletes, Donovan Mitchell was actually in attendance when LeBron James made his infamous decision to take his talents to South Beach. Now, where did LeBron James hold the decision? Remember it aired on ESPN? It wasn't hosted in Akron, Ohio. It wasn't in Cleveland or Detroit. It took place in Greenwich, Connecticut, one of the richest cities not only in America, but in the world. Five years living in Utah, these were the only examples of so-called racism that Donovan Mitchell could come up with. Now, to be fair, he did mention the story of Isabella Teichner. I hope I'm saying her name right. Sometimes I will mispronounce names on purpose. That is not the case here. Isabella was a young girl who took her own life at 10 years old. Now, initially, they thought this was an issue of racial bullying, but it was later discovered she was actually being bullied because she supposedly smelled. I don't know. Either way, 
It should never have happened. School administrators, they could have done more to help the poor child out. But that could happen anywhere. That could be any child, white, black, Hispanic, Asian. This same thing could have happened in Chicago or New Orleans. Just because it happened in Salt Lake City doesn't mean the city is filled with racists. I know I say this on here all the time, but the NBA cannot get out of its own way. The NBA was making a comeback last year. Ratings for the first, second round of the playoffs were the highest they had been in years. It finally seemed the league would be able to move on from LeBron James and draw bigger ratings than before. Then what happened? Steve Kerr, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green dove headfirst into the shallow end of the woke pond, lecturing us on gun control, lecturing fans in Boston for saying, fuck you, Draymond. There were children in that crowd, damn it. Oh, now we're concerned about the children. And it's not just fans in Boston saying that to Draymond Green. Pretty sure most of the country feels the same way. The NBA, they get through all of that. And now we have Donovan Mitchell shitting all over his former fan base. I swear to God, I mean, this league is at war with its own fan base. NBA players consistently bite the hand that feeds them, all because the hand is the wrong color. Doesn't make much sense to me, but what the hell do I know? I'm not a professional victim. But give me your thoughts. Donovan Mitchell accepts his victim card, claiming life in Salt Lake City was oh so hard. I wasn't used to being around so many white people, except, you know, growing up in Westchester County and living in Louisville. I forgot to even mention how Karen Phillips at Deadspin covered this story, and maybe that's a good thing. Karen is one insufferable fuck anyway, but give me your thoughts on Donovan Mitchell. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.